Hey plant peeps, what's up? Welcome back to another video from Here But Not. Um, about four months ago, we did a, a flasking video for Phalaenopsis palins, and uh, I'm long overdue to do the replating on that. So I wanna jump into that, but first, I also wanna give you an update on all the other flasks and just kinda do a quick rundown of what I have going on because there's a lot of plants on the go right now. Um, it, it's fun and interesting and exciting, but then really quickly becomes like a lot. So as you can see, uh, there's, there's a lot of baby plants going on and each one of these has a gazillion little seedlings of their own. So let me just do a quick rundown, give you an update on the seedlings and then we'll jump into the uh, Phalaenopsis palins replate. The seedlings or seeds that I got from a, a friend in France that I'm very excited about is Ophrys apifera. It's the bee, bumblebee orchid, not very commonly seen. Uh, may be difficult to grow. I have one single protocorm so far that's germinated in there. I don't know if I can get that to focus. Anyways, pretty cool. I'm excited about that. I, I have run into some issues with the media being too uh, acidic because I didn't do a pH check and the bottled water that I was using it has a really low pH already. So my last batch of flask media uh, I actually mixed in about half tap water. So um, I, I'm hoping that the new seeds that I just sowed of Ophrys apifera will do better than, than this current one. This one on the left there is Phragmopedium rothianum by Yolara I don't know how to say that one. Super cool plant, red flowers on a longer petal one. So uh, I'm quite excited for this, but not very many of the seeds germinated. So we'll see how that goes. On the left here is Honey Papa by Sam Crothers. I've seen, you've seen this one before. I showed it on previous videos. The seedlings are getting quite large on those, which is great. Uh, Phragmopedium Pink Panther. You can see in the old media, the seedlings are still pretty small. I replated from this one into this other one and they're already picking up speed. So I really do think that uh, whatever I had going on with the media there Oh, sorry for the finger. Whatever I had going on, going on for the media there was not good. This next one is Phragmopedia Memoria de Clemens by Samuel Crothers. Uh, Memo Memoria de Clemens is a super red flower and Sam Samuel um, Crothers has like a really round pouch. So I'm hoping that I can get something between the two of them, but, but there's a pretty good chance that um, Sam Crothers and, and the parentage and that will just overwrite the red and none of the flowers will be red. So I, we'll see how those go. These were some seedlings, Phragmopedium honeypapo by uh, Pink Panther that I had deflasted early because they got so bound together with roots that I couldn't do the replate. And when I tried to do the replate, it was just a mess. So I was like, well, screw this. Took them out and, and just potted them up. And then really quickly after that, they got uh, thrips. So you can see the thrips damage there. Uh, I had got some systemic pesticide stuff. I threw it in there and it killed them and got rid of the thrips at least. But But you can see that uh, the other seedlings are doing okay, and I don't think it's great, but considering a lot of them didn't even have roots, like some had really long roots and then some had none, uh, I've lost a lot less than I thought that I would. Uh, next are the, like a bunch of Phalaenopsis hybrids that I had done that were like, probably not ones that I would have made, but I was like, ah, oh, whatever, I'll give them a shot. I was, it was at the start when I was doing all of the pollination, and I didn't have a lot of seed pods available, so don't, don't like, judge me for the choice of flower. It was more about learning at the time. And, and so, yeah, this one is um, Lehi Sung by Javonica by Hieroglyphica Alba. Uh, I'll bring up an image of that so you can see what they look like. I, I honestly have no idea what the, the outcome will be of these, but it'll be an interesting learning experience nonetheless. Uh, this is Phalaenopsis Schilleriana by uh, Yafon Green Jewel. Again, I, I don't know what these will look like. Um, they're both of the parents. I, I wouldn't have thought to put together, but but I did. And what's interesting about these ones, uh, both of the bottom flasks actually came from a single mother flask, which was in this one. And I replated this into these two. And it kind of shows you like how little seed you actually need to get some. Cause I'm probably gonna have, I guess probably about 25 plants come out of that if they if I manage to get them to full size. Um, but these next ones are Lee, Lee Hai Sung by uh, Jennifer Palermo Cerulea. And this was the mother flask. It's still so full. Like I, I, my stupid cat knocked it over. So 
so they got shooken, shooken up and I, I re, or deflasked some just to be safe and there was a whole bunch left over. But all, all of these are from that one mother and you can see that like a very tiny amount of seeds becomes like a lot of plants really quickly, which is both cool but also like becomes a, a space issue pretty quickly uh, if you don't have a setup for, for how you want to like grow them. All right, so these ones are the Tying Shin Fly Eagle by Basti Bastianii. In previous videos, I had talked about these being by Lovely Mary, but because I wasn't sure that the one parent was a true species of Bastianii. But I sent the um, a bunch of images to Olaf Gruss, and, and he confirmed that um, that it is indeed Bastianii. So, so Tying Shin Fly Eagle by Bastianii. Any of my previous posts or things that are still mentioning Lovely Mary, I have to go back and update. But um, regardless, I have some of the deflask ones. Again, if I've been deflasking them, it's typically because of it's been a mistake where I've, I've had contaminations. Uh, that process has gotten a lot better for me, so I'm not running into as many problems. And as you can see, they, they tend to grow a little faster in flask um, and get a little bigger, which is the goal before you deflask. But a lot of people thought that I was gonna, was gonna end up killing them because I was deflasking them too early. And again, it wasn't out of choice, but like they're not, they're not doing too bad. These I did like very recently. I think this was like a week or two ago. These were two months ago. And then these ones were way older, but um, they were also a lot smaller. So I gave a few of them away to uh, my friend Sylvie out on the East Coast. And um, we'll see how how the rest of them do. There's like too many at this point. So hopefully they look really nice and people want to buy them later on. <laughs> and this is the second seedling that I ever flasked, which is Phalaenopsis Tying Shin Fly Eagle by Belina Alba. These uh, weren't doing really great in flask. Like they've kind of stalled out. And since I've deflasked them, you can see there's some growth and roots, uh, new leaves starting. So I'm more optimistic about just getting these out of flask and getting them going. Um, but we'll see. I've been pretty excited for these because I've, I've seen this cross done before and, and most of the siblings were kind of like a pink and white color rather than the yellow and, and red of the, the tying shin fly eagle parent. But we'll see, like you never, you never really know, right? I've also been working on a lot of new crosses just in, in like anticipation of getting more seed, which I'm probably going to get myself into a lot of trouble here pretty quick, but this one I am very excited for. It's Stavortiana by Amabilis, which is this plant, and then I've crossed this on to Bellina uh, cerulea, which I, I really like aphylae or like sub, subgenus aphylae fowls. They're smaller, they have um, compact flowers, and they're super cool tolerant. So. I think that when you cross those on to novelty fowls like Bellina and, and the other species of poly, polykylos, you get better uh, vigor potentially. We'll see, right? But I'm very excited for this cross. And most people are like, you're nuts. Why would you even cross those? Because they both look ugly, but I like them. The project I'm trying to work on right now is getting the Makotis patola to seed. I have been trying to get the flowers to pollinate and it is not an easy process. So if you have any information on that or advice or thoughts, comment below. They, the flowers, there's none are, none are open right now, but they open upside down and they're not symmetrical. So trying to figure out where the pollen actually goes on such a tiny flower is very difficult. And what I've been doing is literally just jamming the pollen into different sections of the flower in the hopes that one of the spots are the right spot. All right, and the moment that we're here for today, last but not least, Phalaenopsis palins. These are the seeds that we sowed four months ago now. They are much bigger than they were. Uh, like I said, the cat knocked some plants over. These were also of those, so they are a little bit shaken up. They're also doing proliferation of the protocorm, so you can see how there's like kind of spiky, look, spiky looking blobs. That's, I think, because the pH was too low and they're they're a little like panicky about uh, like, well, I don't know, they're not panicky, but, but it's affecting their growth and, and it's causing um, proliferation of the protocorms, which you don't want typically. Like if you're trying to clone plants, then yeah, great. But we're not trying to clone these, they're species and they're already a selfing. So I really don't need more 
eat like clones of the individual plants. So what we're gonna do today, get them out of here, put them into their own flasks and get them growing up. Um, these ones were also from the first like mothers that we had done and they're pretty much stunted at this point. So what I wanna do is at least take one of these flasks and I'll have the second one as fallback in case I screw the first one up um, for the video. So, so let's head over to the kitchen, get things set up and uh, start moving these into a new, new jar, a new home and, and new media that isn't as acidic that'll allow them to kind of get a new growth spurt and, and get on to bigger size like these ones. One thing that I'm a little concerned about is trying to like film through the side of the, the glove box because it's pretty foggy. So I will try and talk through the process that I'm doing so that everybody understands. Um, it may not go as well as I'm hoping and that's just because you can't really see very well. It's, when I start spraying the water, the sides get all foggy. And it's something I noticed in my first video is like actually seeing what I'm doing is not very easy. So I'm gonna do this video, try and make it so that you can see like how I'm doing it. And if it doesn't work, then, then maybe at some point in the future I'll refilm when I have, I don't know, I'll install like a clear glass pane on it or something but we'll see how this goes. So step one, I gotta get all of the flasking stuff um, kind of set up, which means I need to take all this plastic junk off the top. Luckily, we're just doing one plant, so I don't have to worry as much about like tracking the IDs, because if you have multiple flasks going on at the same time, uh, it can be a little bit confusing if you don't have everything ID'd properly at the start. Um, so I have everything set up, ready to go. I'm gonna grab the media, we'll put it in there and start uh, sterilizing everything and I'll get the tools and whatnot set up. Uh, available and ready on standby so that I can do the replates. So I really need to, to make some new media and maybe I'll make a video for that because I've been getting some questions about how to do this. When you're starting this type of work, you really wanna like wash your hands with bleach and water and soap pretty much at the start anytime just to decrease the amount of possible uh, fungus or bacteria or whatever that could be on your hands like when I say fungus I don't mean like all the different types of fungus but even things like yeast right like there's a whole entire like full fauna that lives on our body and um, all of those things can be transferred into a flask so you really need to like get rid of all those things so when you first start doing this stuff you want to spray your hands down with bleach get soap on there make sure that the areas that you're touching the plants with uh, are, are not going to be, or not the plants, the, the areas where you're touching your tools and inside the box are, are getting exposed to as few amounts of, of uh, contaminations and, and pathogens and whatnot as possible. I want to use tweezers. I had one at one point and it was not easy if you're working with like roots and stuff that are together. But really I think for this we just need the spoon. We'll see how things go but um, uh, kind of all three of these are good to have in, in the glove, glove box when you're working. And now we need uh, the disinfectants and sterilizers, which are hydrogen peroxide, which I opened yesterday because I did uh, a couple of flaskings of new seeds yesterday. And then a bleach solution to this so that my tools are being disinfected between every essentially movement between the two. The bleach that I use is 10% chlorine, so one part bleach to eight parts water. Uh, well, I guess seven parts, it's one, I don't actually know. Anyways, it works out around 10%. <laughs> it has to do with the concentration of chlorine that's actually in bleach, and I don't know what those numbers are at the top of my head. I calculated them before, and so that's how that goes. Working in the glove box on a replate, I have one container that has hydrogen peroxide and one container that has bleach. I use the container with bleach to sterilize the tools, sorry, disinfect, sterilizes heat only. Um, and I use the hydrogen peroxide essentially to rinse off the bleach because I don't wanna go and touch like all the plants with 10% chlorine and then put them into the thing and not have a way of cleaning them. So I, I also don't have a way of of like cleaning the tools off or rinsing them off because I don't want to introduce like quote unquote sterilized water and potentially have spores in the water that, you know, have come from the tap or wherever. And I don't want to go and um, sterilize water every time in a pressure cooker I'm going to do this. So 
I use bleach and hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is like a fail safe. I can use the hydrogen peroxide to dilute the chlorine afterwards. So like it's in bleach here. I dunk it in the chlorine or the peroxide and the peroxide will oxidize later on, not causing as much damage to the seedlings um, after I, I move them across. I made the comment about sterilization versus disinfection. Sterilization is heat and it has to go over like 121 degrees Celsius. So that kills viruses and, and for sure spores and everything else. Disinfection generally kills the spores and potential like pathogen, but it often doesn't kill viruses. So when you're working with your tools, you wanna sterilize them and disinfect them. You wanna sterilize them first, so flame each all of your tools before you start working with them. Or if you're working between different um, sets of plants, you wanna sterilize them with flame because I don't, I can't run uh, like fire inside of that box. What I do is I flame the tools first and then I put them into the bleach water so that I can, can use um, like sterilized and disinfected tools and I can sterilize them outside, at which point potentially they're gonna be exposed to bacteria or fungal spores. But that's why I, I disinfect them inside the container, which means everything in the container is disinfected and I'm at least not uh, transferring possibly any viruses if I've used the tools on any plants that did have viruses by chance. All right, so getting my tools and whatnot set up, I'm gonna set those aside. I'm gonna put the bleach water here. Um, and I, I generally put the bottles in the same order off to the side so that I can remember like what I put where. Uh, the other thing you wanna do on both of these is a tiny drop of soap so that the surface tension is broken and you don't have any, like if you're working with tools and there's a dry spot, um, then you can at least ensure that the like surface area has max maximum coverage. And All right, so next I'm gonna take the tools and I'm going to sterilize each one, uh, flame it in the working area so that any, like if this was in contact with anything that had a virus, I am killing the potential for that virus and I'm not transferring it to new seedlings. Super important. And then after this, you can throw it in the bleach and it's fine. And if I was working with multiple sets of seedlings, then you'd want to take your tools out and do this between them or have multiple sets of tools so that you can sterilize them in batches and use them separately inside the glove box. These edge pieces off first. You can't just put them in uh, because you need to spray around the bottom and you don't, want, I, I don't know about like, you can do what you want, but I don't wanna be doing that inside the, inside the glove box. I'm not gonna lie, this isn't going quite as smoothly as I was hoping for. It's a little, thinking about the process when you haven't done it a lot, you've done it a few times enough to know what you're talking about, but not enough to be like, yeah, I know exactly what I'm doing inside out and backwards makes it a little difficult to kind of go with the flow on these things. And I just knocked it over, perfect. So you wanna get these all in there as well as your tools so that you can essentially ensure that it's a closed off space. Bleach on the left hand side, peroxide on the other, the new flasks. And then what we're gonna do, get the light back on there and spray everything down so it can sit for the next 10 minutes and just let bleach soak into literally everything. So I clean off the side and you can kind of see in there. Uh, I'm gonna try and make sure that I can do this so that you can see everything I'm doing. The trouble is as I spray, the sides of things are going to get uh, moist again and that's a problem. Okay, so I'm just gonna move everything around to get everything so it's in like a functional workspace for myself. I don't even know. I'll put these up to the side. Get the main flask in the middle. My second dunk table there, which I said I was gonna keep in the same order, and of course I'm already not doing that. All right. So I'm gonna start with the gloves. You wanna spray everything down and let it sit for 10 minutes. Um, get your services all bleached and wet and covered. 
you especially want to get up around the lip in this area because that's where your areas of like essentially it's like a it's like a hidden area so it's harder to or it's easier for pathogens to grow in there so we're just going to spray the whole thing down flask one flask two around the lip on the top any crevices top bottom you got it and set it aside and then the last one same deal this one has a band-aid on top because it's supposed to be like an air vent so i'll just let it make sure that i got a little extra on top there and then i'm gonna run out of bleach soon but hopefully not before i'm done this so you really want to get the nozzle close to that bottom threaded area because Honestly, that's from what I've seen. That's the biggest point of infection. If I haven't done this really thoroughly, that's the that's when I end up with having uh, contaminations. So, okay, move, get out of my way. Uh, so everything sprayed down. We're gonna let everything sit for ten minutes. So you can see that everything in there is quite wet, even the bottom where the where the um, paper towel is. It's soaking wet. I don't know that that's something you're supposed to do. From my perspective, if you have like your entire workspace coated in bleach, you've got a better chance, or you're, you've got a, yeah, you've got a better chance of reducing contamination because the whole space is essentially inhospitable to fungus and bacteria, spores, and whatnot. Um, so what we're going to do now is essentially for each flask, I've only got two replate. Um, New, new replay flasks in there, so we're only going to work probably with the one uh, for the video. But what I want to do is open the, the flask up, go in with tweezers or the spoon, scoop out <clears throat> scoop out the protocorms, try and bring as little um, dead protocorms with, uh, as well as extra media because it's like as little as possible, and then move them into the new flask and place them distributed so that they're not super closely clustered together which by the way is often easier said than done and at the end of the day if they're just stuck together and I can't separate them I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time trying to because in my opinion the longer you have the flasks open the higher chance you are for introducing contaminations because while I'm working in this my hands are in these these holes and they're moving in and out so there is a small amount of air that's being pulled in and pulled out with each movement it's not a lot, but you know, the the shorter period of time that a flask is open for, the better chance you're gonna have it like not having contaminations, in in my opinion. All right, so it's been ten minutes. Let's see how this goes. Uh, I had to open the container up again to wipe down the side so that the camera wasn't focusing on the side of the glove box. So there is a chance that I introduce new contaminations, but if I keep spraying there's going to be like atomized particles on the side and then the camera focuses on that. So for the sake of the video, I'm doing this slightly differently, but understand that if you're working in this and you're doing this at home on your own, just sp spray and obviously don't worry about the sides of the container. Um, so this one has a whole bunch. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, there's a bunch of them in there. We're going to get the new flask that it's going into and the old one. And I'm going to use a set of tweezers. I'm going to rinse them off in the hydrogen peroxide so that bleach and whatever isn't left residually on each plant. And we're going to open the flask. Oh man, this is the worst part. Okay, put the old lid on top of another lid because it's got. Uh, it's got bleach and stuff on there already. Try and set it down slowly so there's no sudden movements. There we go. Got my tweezers. I'm gonna go in. That 
that's a whole mass of them. Typically would not want to plant all of those together, but they don't have much of a choice, like I said earlier. Ah, crap, I dropped one. Those will be not growing up. And if you can push them down into the media like a bit, then go for it. I don't think you necessarily have to, but I have noticed that in some cases, um, roots have a harder time growing if they're uh, not in contact with the media. I'm just going to go through and I am having a hard time seeing now because <laughs> it's so humid in there. Which probably means you are too, so see how this goes. I think that's probably enough for one. So this, let's just take a look here. Uh, I could do one more in the middle. Oh no, there we go. All right, so this goes back in the bleach. This goes back on the lid. And if we can, we'll keep the old mother because, oh, that is not what I wanted to do. That is exactly not what you want to do. Damn it. <laughs> Anyways, I'll edit that one out. So ultimately, you can, you can reuse the old um, mother over and over again if you need to. Some people will keep the mother for for many months afterwards and then replate it from there. Uh, what I want to do next is is replate from the smaller mother because I can use I can show you the spoon um, process, like just using a spoon tool instead of the tweezers. And these ones are stalled the most and I kind of feel bad that they're just not growing. Um, and then the rest, like you end up having a whole bunch of extra that you probably have to throw in the end. That's just kind of part of how it goes. So step one, get the lid off this one. Oh. Get the lid off this. You can hold the cap on this one. Get the spoon. Get the bleach one more time. Into the peroxide. Open the second flask that we're putting them into. I have not looked at the video recently, so I really hope that these are like looking. I hope you can see. Yeah, you can. All right, so then what we want to do now is scoop seeds from the flask without tr like trying not to touch the area around the lip as much as possible and use these in the new flask. I don't know if that was a great idea, but I was doing that on the other one, it worked fine. Um, and really you just want to be scooping them out of here. Hopefully I am in focus on that because I cannot see the camera. And... Cap back on here. Put this cap back on here. And get the spoon back in the disinfector. <laughs> bah. Okay, that went pretty well, I guess. So we'll see how these go. Um, I'll, next, I'll take them out, we'll tie them up, and we'll talk about uh, the next step strategy of like what we do now because at this point there's a chance that these have been contaminated and I need to make sure I don't screw anything else up. Take everybody out. The mother that I didn't touch. The mother that I did touch. 
and the two replates. And we'll get these out of here as well because we're done with those. And then I'll clean out the rest of the container later. So the tiniest one that like literally has very few protocorms left, these are the seedlings from that one. Um, the, they're kind of in masses and generally you probably want to like try and spread them out or separate them earlier on than what I have. Otherwise they start to stick together because you get these little hairs that come out. Um, either way, those will be fine though. They should grow up as long as I don't have any contaminations in there. Same with these. These are the replates from this mother. As you can see, it barely looks like I put a dent in there. So you kind of run into this situation where, where you have like lots and lots of seedlings and you're probably not going to be growing all of them up. I do want to replate a few more of these though. Phalaenopsis palins is kind of a cool little species and uh, I at least want to distribute them and get them out to some friends and whatnot. And do another replate when the camera's off because it's a lot easier and I also just don't like I do, I do want some of these to actually grow up and I'm a little concerned that trying to film and, and muck around with the side of the container and stuff just potentially increased more contamination because I was like lifting the sides up, wiping the side down and really I shouldn't be worrying about that. I should be worrying about maximum like sterility inside the container. So that's pretty much it for the replate. Uh, as you can see, there's lots of stuff on the go. I, I probably need to find a way to like not be doing so many seedlings at one time and just slow it down so that I have like a couple types of crosses every year that I'm working on rather than an entire table of seedlings. Um, one more thing before we go, let's go check out Clyde because I think he's sleeping. He did not have a good night last night because I left the lights on and I'm pretty sure he didn't sleep because of that. Hey, are you tired? I'm sorry, kitty. I won't bug you. Just kidding. Yeah, kitty. Yeah. Wow, you're so cute. Okay, go to sleep. All right, so thanks for taking along. Sorry that it's, it's, oh man, did I get bleach on my pants? Ah, oh, that sucks. All right, so thanks for taking along. Sorry it was a little choppy. I have other videos that I needed to do like really soon. I, I had to get this one out of the way. And while I want to do other videos that are more fun and casual, this is like a systematic thing that I had to get done. And so it's a longer video, had to get it done. Sorry it took so long. Hey, check out that. Doesn't that look great? Oh, so nice. Anyways, uh, I hope you're well. Happy Thanksgiving if you're in Canada and, and wherever else that you're doing Thanksgiving. Or maybe if you're in the U.S. and it's November and you're watching this, happy Thanksgiving for you. Uh, whatever. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Bye.